Welcome to worship for Sunday, May 14th, 2023, Mother's Day, here at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas. There are several scripture passages, most of them are short, but they all are connected in the theme of God as mother. And hopefully we will be inspired by these words to understand God a little bit more clearly and to honor our mothers on this Mother's Day weekend. Hear God's word first from Isaiah chapter 46, verses 3 through 5. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been born by me from your birth, carried from the womb, even to your old age, I am he. Even when you turn gray, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, I will carry and will save. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me as as though we were alike? The second reading is Hosea chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols, yet... It was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. The next reading is from Psalm chapter 57, just verse 1. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge until the destroying storm passes by. The next reading is a longer reading from Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and defense. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. And the last of the readings, again, is only one verse, or in fact, part of a verse. Luke chapter 13, verses 34, the last half of that verse. Jesus said, How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Here ends this reading and all of these readings. May God bless them to our understanding as we thank God together. Mother's Day is a very mixed holiday uh, with sometimes surprisingly intense emotions surrounding the day and the weekend, in fact. For some, even for most, Mother's Day is a day of happiness and joy, a day in which we are able to honor those we love, who have loved us. But for others, it is a day tinged with sorrow or regret, 
for those who have lost a mother, for those mothers who have lost a child, for those who have wanted children and did not have children, for those whose relationships are strained or broken, for all of these, Mother's Day is a very complicated holiday. I always find it hard to preach on Mother's Day, in fact, to, to think of a theme because of all these circumstances. But because of all that, in thinking of a theme for this sermon this year, I remembered that a few years ago, I preached a sermon on Father's Day about God as Father. And so I decided I might try preaching from the biblical passages that compare God to a mother. It's an imperfect analogy, of course. Either as mother or father, the analogy is imperfect. God is both and neither. God doesn't have a gender or has both genders, however you consider. God is, God is bigger than human parents. God is bigger and greater than male or female. God is greater than our imaginations. God the Creator is impossible to define or describe completely. The point is, don't take this sermon too seriously, but take God seriously. And be open to the many ways that God can come to us as we are approached by God and approach God, even as a mother. God can come to us in any way God chooses. Uh, for some, the image of God as a mother has opened up some connections and some understanding about the nature of God and who God is. In the biblical uh, sense, God is frequently, in the Bible, uh, God is frequently referred to as Father, frequently, trying to capture that very personal, loving character of God as a parent, trying to express the inheritance that we receive as children of God. Uh, Jesus refers to God as Abba, often, uh, which is more like a, uh, a casual, very personal familial connection, more like our daddy might be. God loves us as a parent, uh, but not exclusively as a father and not biologically. God is bigger than human, greater than anything we can imagine. God is both mother and father to us. The scripture passages from the sermon are a few examples of where God is referred to as mother or in feminine terms or described as mothering, nursing, nurturing, or birthing. Some people have taken offense to calling God mother, saying it is incomplete or imperfect. Well, yes. <laughs> so is any name for God incomplete and imperfect? Uh, some, some people have taken it too far the other way and name the divine exclusively in feminine terms. So, so some can't connect to God as a mother, and some can't connect to God as a father. Some like the image of mother God because it seems more personal or flowing, intimate, and connected. I suppose our understanding of God as, as father or as mother is influenced by our relationships with our human parents. What I'm trying to say is don't stress or be distressed by this image about the, the feminine image, images of God or the masculine images of God. If, if it helps you connect with God, great. If it doesn't, don't think about it anymore. One interesting point, grammatically, about the word spirit in both Hebrew and Greek, the original languages in which the Bible was written, in both languages, the word for spirit is a feminine form. Uh, this could be just a matter of grammar, or it could be God's inspiration. Uh, 
it opens the door to thinking about the Spirit of God as both masculine and feminine. God is greater than our language and greater than our genders. If we try to limit God to one or the other, we limit God and also limit our understanding of all that God is. God is both mother and father. The Holy Spirit includes both feminine and masculine traits. And, and even beyond that, God is much more than we can imagine or describe. God is greater. Even knowing that, uh, that God is more than we can understand. Uh, we have forever tried to describe God and capture God in an image. We have named God a fire, a pillar of light, uh, lightning, smoke, storm, wind, as shepherd, as king, as lion, as lamb, as eagle, as brooding him, hen. We have tried to name God. We try to describe God in so many ways, knowing that all of these descriptions tell a little bit about God and who God is, but none of our descriptions of God are, are enough to capture everything that is God, everything about the great God who loves us. The scripture passages for today talk about God using uh, maternal images, the most, the most common one in the Bible, and it's repeated in other passages besides the ones that I read, the most common image in the Bible is the brooding hen or the protective bird, uh, gathering babies under the wings to, to care and to protect. That is used many times in scripture. Even Jesus uses that image. God wanting to gather and protect God's people. And both male and female birds do that, but Jesus' reference is actually about the hen, the mother. It's a beautiful image that ev evokes a, a wonderful feeling of safety and security, love and warmth. God protects us. God shelters us in the storm. God gathers us under wing. God, like, like any mother, God will do anything to take care of us, to fight off danger and save us from harm. God will protect us. Just imagine that protective wing of God around you now, sheltering you, loving you at all times. Imagine the protective mother lion or bear Taking, taking care of their cub, fighting off enemies, defending and pushing back danger or evil, showing that fierce love of a mother to keep the child safe. God loves us just so ferociously. God protects us devotedly. We are God's children, and God will do anything to take care of us. God has done everything to save us, even to the point of dying on the cross. Mother love is ferocious. Just so, God loves you. The other biblical image of God as mother is the natural image of birth, nursing, and nurture from childhood. Uh, the clearest of these is in the reading from Isaiah for, that I read earlier today. God says, You have been born by me from your birth, carried from the womb, even to your old age. I am the one. Even when you turn gray, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. I will carry and I will save. It's not hard to imagine the creator God forming us, nursing us, nurturing us. Everything that is good about a mother, God is. Sometimes this idea of a warm and feminine God helps us to understand God more clearly. Maybe it does for you, maybe it doesn't. Uh, we try to understand who God is, how God loves the tenderness of a mother and a father is clear to us. 
Whether you had it or not, that love is clear. God loves you. God always will love you, no matter what happens in your life, no matter where you stand in life, no matter, God will always love you. God is always for you, for all of us. God loves us like a parent, even, even better than our parents, if that's possible. God loves us. God loves the entire world. So I'm back where I started uh, with Mother's Day. Wherever you find yourself on Mother's Day, know that God loves you. Know that God is for you. Know that God will always be here for you. For some, for some of us, being happy on Mother's Day is very easy. For some, being happy on Mother's Day is a little harder. If you're a mother, if, you, if your mother is with you, if you have great memories and a positive relationship, Mother's Day is easy and joyful and fun. Be blessed as you are able to spend time together and conversation with those you love. But if, if Mother's Day is hard for you, for any reason, uh, if you face some kind of pain or grief or challenge for Mother's Day, then know that God is with you. Know that there are people in this community who care for you, who love you. And know also there is hope for today and possibility for tomorrow. May you be blessed this week as we honor God and as we honor mothers to the glory of God. May you be blessed, be blessed to know that God loves you. Know that God is with you. Know that God offers you joy this day and every day. Thanks be to God. Amen.